my panel up. We started this project, I had a meeting with a few of our key vendors and asked each of them to rethink some of the materials they supply to us, see if they couldn't do something more innovative and a little bit better. So we reviewed some of the problem areas with each of these various products we buy and some of the vendors were very creative. One that did an outstanding job was a company called Lawn Seal, which makes uh, flooring. For many years we've used Lawn Seal flooring in galleys. It's the, uh, we use a material called Lawn Coin, which has the circular pattern. Yep. Mm -hmm. The beige color, we've used it in a number of models. Um, they developed a new floor material for us. This is actually a textured vinyl. And uh, you can see there are no screw heads anywhere mm -hmm. in the floor. Um, one of the problems we had in the past was, of course, all the floor materials were uh, glued to, the teak veneers or the formicas were glued to a plywood substrate, which was then screwed to the floor and sat in recesses in the floor. Well, sometimes those recesses could hold water if they got a lot of water below, and then, of course, it would attack the plywood yeah. mm -hmm. and eventually delaminate it. I mean, it might take years, but I thought, let's, let's think of a new way to do this. So what we did in this boat is we molded in recesses about an eighth of an inch deep mm -hmm. and uh, cut this with steel patterns so that we cut these this vinyl material and glue it right to the fiberglass. So there's no organic material in the boat at all. Uh, you, you can easily you know, mop down or clean this with, uh, without worrying about getting water trapped down below the sole panels. It's extremely durable. Um, I think it looks great, and the other advantage is it has, it's a matte texture, and it has a rolled-in texture like teak, so it's great non-skip. Mm. It feels good on bare feet because it's a little bit compliant, yep. and it, it has great transverse traction Fantastic. because of the molded-in grooves. I think it looks, mm. and you, you have a wonderful reaction to it. And you can take it up the corners. And work yes, good. and you can slightly roll it up. Yeah. As you can see, so it lets your eye travel further outboard in the boat, is if we had a break there and then had, you know, white exposed fiberglass. Hey, Gary. Because the hallmark for Catalina's is great engine access, and we wanted that in this boat as well. So we made a companionway ladder that is two segments, upper and lower segment. Very sturdy stainless steel ladder. And your box swings down out of the way. See, it's heavily insulated. It has a sound reduction gaskets around the perimeter, and then a teak cleat assembly there that creates an, an air lock and a mm -hmm. sound lock. And this is on pull apart hinges so you just slide this slightly to one side yep. and you can remove the whole motor box and put it somewhere else in the cabin. But yeah, great access for daily checks. This is a, this is a Yanmar uh, 2GM20. It's actually a 21 horsepower engine. But uh, Yanmar has done something very clever with this engine. They have uh, a very low reduction gear. So we're turning this engine into roughly three to one reduction gear, which could just swing a pretty big prop. This develop this engine turns over at fairly low revs, yes. so it's um, we were able to power this boat in our original sea trials at about 7.4 knots. We're actually getting better performance out of this engine than we did with the 25 XP. Mm -hmm. They're both three-cylinder engines. For a long while, Yanmar resisted making smaller engines with more than two cylinders, but uh, I know I was fairly insistent when they talked to me that I wouldn't use a smaller Yanmar unless they made it at least three cylinders. So I thought the two cylinder engines were inherently probably balanced. The threes are much quieter. Um, the, the vibration is equal to other three cylinder engines. Um, they've done a great job with the is isolation mounting. And because they started with a clean piece of paper and Yanmar makes only marine engines, yep. um, they really paid attention to what boat builders wanted. And they did things like put all the service points on the front of the engine which make it very easy if you have to change the water pump. It's right there. Mm -hmm. the, things you're the dipstick is right here. You know, all the things, the fuel filter is right here. Um, all the things you're going to want to get at regularly are right at the front of the engine. Mm. And of course, they've shielded the, the, uh, the, yeah. the alternator belt. Which they do that on, the, they do on the big end. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, the engine is very, very clean burning. It complies with the new 2006 EPA regulations. Mm. And the, and the pending CE regulations for both sound and uh, air quality. So, Jerry, this so I'm very pleased with it. Yeah, this boat fully loaded would have the same uh, through the water characteristics as a, a 310, would it? Yes. With the bigger engine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm.
at lower RPMs. So that's the dress shoe. That's really good. Thank you. Well, you're aware, Tony, we're big believers in ABYC, the American Boat and Yacht Council, which really writes all the, the standards for boat construction in the U.S. and was actually many of those have been adopted by CE, has become the CE standard. So it's sort of the yacht construction that's become a global standard now. But they are uh, very specific about things like uh, wiring and panels. Yes. Um, we use the ABYC color codes exclusively and follow the ABYC wiring rules exclusively, which have to do with the gauge wire. The wire must all be tinned, which of course mm -hmm. retards corrosion at the fittings and uh, describes how the panels must be constructed. Um, we did a new panel design for this boat, and something that I think was interesting is we did um, these Euro-style Euro pull-out fuses. And what I think is neat about these is that when we have we have space for accessories, and all of our panels have places for people to add gear, because I know in three years people will be putting on their boats things we haven't even thought of yet. Um, but they can put in the appropriate size fuse without having to um, yeah. without having to change the breaker or the switch in the panel. Yeah. So it makes it much more economical to do and easy to do, say, if they swap out a uh, different system that requires a larger fuse size. We gauge all the wire in the boat for the largest fuse size. Yes. Yeah. So if someone accidentally puts a, a larger fuse in a smaller fuse holder, it's not going to make any difference. We supply a removal tool and a few spare fuses. Mm -hmm. Yep, fantastic. One the entire panel is piano hinged on the aft side. Mm -hmm. And we have big loops for stress relief. Um, one of the things ABYC requires, I think it's important, is that the AC side be covered. Yes. So if someone opens up the panel, there's no danger of them accessing the um, or okay. the, the AC accidentally. Yes. So you got to do that on the 240 volt boats now, aren't you? Because that hasn't been happening on the 240 volt It, it will happen. Yeah. In fact, it does, but they take them off. I don't know why. Mm. But you can see there's lots of space back there. These are the, the positive buses for the, each battery, and it's numbered. Um, this is a ground bus bar for yeah. the DC side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's very tidy and yeah. And you have these. Uh, what do you call these? These cutouts. Yes. Work. What we do is we know there are several popular options on these boats, and when we we mold this panel, we pre-cut um, areas in the back so that if a customer elects to put it in, they just need to cut through the veneered surface and yeah. it fits mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. So that that'll fit a standard plotter. Um, we supply in the owner's manual a drawing showing where the cutouts are in the back. So if yeah. the customer wants to add gear later on, they'll know where to do it. Okay. The batteries we provide, one 4D deep cycle battery standard and one group uh, NC24 starting battery. This is always battery number one. That's battery number two so that the customer can use this for starting the engine. This is the house bank. Yeah, so in amp hours, how many, how many amp? Uh, this is approximately 225 amp hours. Mm -hmm. um, but you see, we've made this fiberglass battery box large enough such that if someone wants to slide that one aft, yeah. they can accommodate a second 4D right there yeah. and move the group 27 to that locker forward. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. So you could double the size of the house bank. Quite Most easy. people are not going to need that. But yeah. mm -hmm. the, the ability is there. We thought, let's design it in from yes. the get-go yeah. mm -hmm. to make it easy for folks that want to do that. And you've got this nice fiberglass box that to keep right. the acid in, acid in board. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you saw, the bilges are nicely finished and clean. So yeah. if you want to mm -hmm. you know, store gear down there. And the, there's a 20-amp uh, battery charger. Yep. Mm-hmm.